Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the Ford Mustang Boss. My new favourite car to drive around Tokyo, without a shadow of a doubt. This car is an absolute beast. Someone on GT Planet summed it up perfectly for me. This car has no business being this fast. It has 663 horsepower. And you think, oh, American muscle car must handle like a dog. No. Handles like a dream. It's got a bit of a twitchy back end, but nothing that you can't control. And as we get to the first corner, we've already overtaken 12 cars, including the RX-7. You sat behind the Supra. It's unbelievable. Your next question will be, oh, doesn't it eat the fuel? No. This car will stop once, and that's all you need. That's that twitchy back end. <laughs> that was just me getting a bit overzealous, but you know what? It's great fun to drive. So, let me show you what this car can do on its fastest lap. So, we're coming down the back straight. Quick check of my fuel, back to the session best. Second slower that time, can do better. 2038, that's what we're aiming for consistency. So as we come to the first corner, looking for our braking marker, it's going to be right underneath the 200 metre mark. We're going to go heavy on those brakes until we need to turn. As soon as we need to turn, let go, let the car coast around the corner, feathering the power on the way out so you don't lose control. Same again on the second corner, just let it roll, feather the power on the way out, and you get no wheel spin there. You're also looking after your tyres. Third corner, we're going to go in hard. Slight dab of the brakes, letting the car coast around the corner and then on the power as soon as we know we can get out of it. Stay tight to the uh, fourth corner's wall, dropping down to 100 for the first K, getting on the power gently, keeping all the traction, lets you look after the tyres. Looking after the tyres is so important. Slight touch of the brakes under the bridge, keep tight to the corner wall, power straight out. Same again for this corner. I had to get a little bit of damage on the way out, so there's a bit of time to be gained there. Drop the car down to second for this corner. Again, get the car rotated round before you get on the power. Same again here. Rotate the car, get on the power. And then we're going to take it all the way down to the hairpin at the bottom. Your braking point is around the 150 metre mark. And you're just going to have to brake really heavy. You have to slow it all the way down to 30 until you hit the middle of that hairpin get the car rotated round as soon as you can and then on the power as soon as possible the less turning you do in that corner on power the better a good exit on that corner is dead important and that will take us over the line for a 2037 and now you can see on the right hand side I did my 2038 on my fifth lap so on these tyres, they do wear out the sport softs, but it is possible to push them hard right until the la very last lap. Last lap's touch and go. Your rear tyres will go towards the end of the lap. That's the only time you'll struggle. But that 10 second pit stop's not worth the two seconds that you'll lose for an extra pit stop to keep your tyres fresh. And if we go to the end here, you can see me crossing the line for a 25.46. Was it 47? No, 46.8. So, let's get into the tune. So, we're going to go to GT Auto first. And then we're going to put the custom parts on. I've already put the front splitter on. We're going to put the rear diffuser on next. And then we're going to put on a custom wing. That sorts out the aero. Now it's time for the wheels. So, any wheel you like. I'm using this one off this bullet livery and what you want to do is increase the wheel size to whatever you want or have it as small as you want doesn't really matter I'm sticking with the 18 inch and then you want your rim width to be standard but your offset to be wide wider wheels mean more stable car we're going to head over to GT tuning shop and we're going to put on the sports tyres sports soft did have a look at the racing hards but it pushed that PP too far. So next we're going to put on the fully customizable racing transmission, fully customizable suspension, 
Next up, you're going to want the fully customizable computer. And then we're going to go ahead and put all the weight reductions on. One, two, and three. And that's going to bring that weight right down. So it started off 1500 kilos. And there it brings it down to just under 1200 kilos. Next up, fully customizable limited slip diff and the high end supercharger. Next up, we're going to go for racing brakes, whichever you want drilled, slotted, carbon, racing brake pads, and the racing flywheel. After that, I didn't really use it, but you can put on the brake balance controller. This can help with uh, any understeer under braking, particularly. Next up is the racing exhaust manifold. Get that on there. Um, you can look at the PP now. We're up at 597. You think, oh, I can't put more on. And it just lets you. With no extra PP, so racing air filter, racing silencer, drags it down for some reason. And we've still got another 60 horsepower to go. One part to avoid is the engine balance tuning. This will push you over the 600 PP. So next up, we're going to increase body rigidity. That just reduces the, well, it usually reduces, actually increases the PP on this. But obviously, the speeds we're going, we need that. Next up, we're going to put on the racing intercooler. That pushes up to 637. And then we're going to put on polish ports. And that takes up to 644. And we're almost there. And then finally, we're going to put on bore up. And that is far as we can push this car. But that's 663 horsepower. Now, I've already mentioned the sport soft tyres. Next up is downforce, and you want to set the front to 52 and the rear to 271. And this will give you good stability in those high speed corners, particularly turns 3 and 4. Here's that to bear with, I did some tinkering. And next up, we're going to go to over to the suspension and taking it from the top. On the front ride height you want 100 and then on the rear 180. On the anti roll bar on the front you want 9 and on the rear you want 10. Damping compression you want 34 on both and then on damping expansion you want 44 front and rear. Natural frequency you want 2.1 on the front and then 1.7 on the back. Negative camber angle, you want 3.0 on them both. And then toe angles, you want 0 0.05 on the front. And then toes in the back, 0.35. Bit extreme, but it helps with the stability. Right, so to the gears, knock it back to 150. And then go straight down to the final gear manual adjustment and put that to 2. And then you're going to want to change it to these numbers. From 5th to 1st, so you want 391, 295, 247, 205 and 140. That'll get your maximum usage out of the gears. And that's it. Brake balance controller is set to 0 and the rest is the tune we went through. So yeah, there you have it. 600pp. And there you have it folks. I know I say it all the time, but this is <laughs> brilliant to drive this. Uh, shout out for this tune has to go to Ray now on GT Planet. Uh, they've sussed out this tune uh, and then put lobbing the extra parts on without any PP. Which is brilliant. Don't think I would have tuned it this way, particularly with the Ray ride height being ridiculously high. But that seems to be what it gives it more steering capabilities, get better rotation in the corners. So yeah, I've got a new favourite car for Tokyo. Hope you enjoy it guys, if you do, leave a like, Any, anything you want us to check, just leave a comment below and we'll look into it, and we'll see you all next time. Adios.